Hello and welcome to this second installment in our podcast series around personal development. I'm here with Phil from Tablet Academy. My name is Rasmus Borch. I look after services and solutions for education in EMEA for Lenovo. And we're really here to have a conversation on the leadership part of professional development in the schools. So Phil, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I began as a teacher and I used to teach in an all through school, primary and secondary. And there I was teaching computer science. And then I've done a variety of things since. I've done workshops in education, been a corporate trainer in-house and freelance. And I got a job at Tableau Academy. Now, what I first started out doing was Tableau Academy had a contract with Microsoft and there was a dedicated showcase classroom here in London where my job was to try and show educators, school leaders, partners, the Microsoft solutions in education. That was a fascinating experience, working with lots of different people, hands-on immersive workshops. Once that finished, I then did more training in schools, in colleges all around the UK, showing them all the Microsoft technologies, helping educators not just know how to use the products, but how to use them effectively for teaching and learning. But that's sort of at the end of the journey. And often what I would find is, well, why did you make that decision? Well, that's what we knew. So we then started to work more closely at the start of the journey with strategy and being able to evaluate where a school is already at. And that's what I do now. My focus now is working with schools, groups of schools, colleges, ministries of education, helping them work out where they are, where they'd like to be, and how to get there. So it's all about people, helping educators, helping the staff in the schools and the colleges use technology effectively. So Tablet Academy, that's what we do. We do workshops for students. We do training for staff, both teaching staff and support staff within education. And we work with the leaders to develop that digital strategy so that they've got a plan of action for moving forward. Sounds like uh, quite a personal journey, but also like quite a job you have. In how many countries are Tablet Academy today? Many countries. We started off in England and now we continue to expand across the Europe, Middle East and Africa. Now, it's intriguing. You're from Lenovo. Initially, I thought, well, devices, servers, that's great. But now it's great. We've got a partnership to do much more than that. Why is Lenovo sort of interested in solutions and consultancy and training? Well, it's, it's a good question. And I think it, it's, it comes down to Lenovo is mostly known for being the biggest PC manufacturer in the world. And we've done that for years. We're really good at it. But some years back, the leadership decided that Lenovo should no longer just be about devices, that we would build solutions for verticals, verticals, one of them being education. And so when we work with schools and governments, yes, we deliver devices, yes, we deliver, deliver services, but we really think about the whole life cycle from a device is built, shipped into the schools, it's used there and finally repurposed. Uh, and part of that is making sure that things actually work and what we found is that the one thing that we cannot do is make sure that technology is well integrated into teaching and learning. And so that's why we partnered up with you. But I understand the question. It's, it's a new thing for Lenovo and an exciting thing. Yeah, so, but, but that, that experience you have, you must also have a quite a good view on what it takes to do a really good technology supported uh, integration uh, into learning and, and teaching. So, so from your experience, what are the key pillars you need to think about? Great question. Got to get the infrastructure right first. If you haven't got the building blocks, then there's no point building the building on top of that. So making sure you've got the right network equipment, internet connectivity, licensing. Some schools go, oh, we want some more devices. But if you haven't got that in place, they're not going to work properly and teachers are just going to get frustrated. But of course, that's only just one part of it. Related to that, however, is also the technical support. You might only have one or two staff members responsible for technical support. And they're like, what? How am I going to support all this new stuff? I haven't got the capacity to do that. I'm just fighting fires or I don't know these new systems. So making sure you've got the right amount of people with the time dedicated to do that. But they need the skills as well. But even then, you've got the tools. You've got people to help fix the tools. But that's not going to transform education. So it's then about having the staff members who've got the skills to be able to not only know how to use the tools, but how to teach effectively with them to make a difference in the classroom. And that requires uh, 
professional development, which I know we're going to talk about tomorrow, perhaps in one of these video podcasts. But more than that, it's got to have the support from the leadership that actually this is not just about having a device. It's not just using it to display some information on a screen, which is useful. It's about embedding it as part of the teaching practices. And that's really important and quite difficult to do, given the rigors of teaching and all the other busyness that has to happen in a school yeah, context. Absolutely. So in preparing for this podcast, you told me that, you know, vision and strategy is not enough. And you said it's about leadership, but you have to explain a little bit more, right? Because I, I usually think about leadership as a lot to do with strategy and vision. So, so what is it that they need to think about, which is not just strategy and vision? That's it. It all comes down to your why. You might have a vision. We want to be the attractive school where all the students want to come to. And that's an okay motivation to have for investing further in technology. But just saying we want students to come because we got the latest and greatest kit is not enough. And so understanding the why behind that vision, uh, having a digital strategy, I call it, is really important. But also understanding what true and effective sponsorship is so that you can make an effective change, not just get the stuff, do a bit of training, but so that it becomes ingrained as part of the culture in the school is really important. Yeah, so so sponsorship, what does that really mean? It's a funny word, it's not something I've come up with. When you look at a lot of uh, literature around change management, what that means is that person who has influence over the outcomes of the change. And so there's three key components to effective sponsorship. Now, this works in any change, but I'll relate it specifically to a school environment. It's based on a lot of research done by a company called ProSci, who specialize in change management. And they said there's the ABCs of sponsorship. So A, that's the first thing. What we need there is for them to be able to uh, activate the appropriate uh, team to be able to work effectively so just having the sponsor going yes we're going to do direct digital we're going to use that in our teaching and learning but now i'll step back and hand it over to somebody else to do that they've got to have that active role in the sponsorship so that people know that this is important not just oh okay yep another initiative will take place later and next week we'll be focusing on something else Yes, it's important to hand it over and delegate that responsibility to other leaders within the school context, but having that active role is really important so that people know, oh, this is important and all oh, this is coming down from the top. It's not just being handed over to a sort of another staff member. The B is building a coalition. So as a leader, you can then prioritize projects and say, right, so we need support IT management. We need you on hand to be able to implement the new policies and new structure and all the uh, infrastructure that's required. But also we need to have representatives from teaching and learning because they need to understand what effective teaching with technology looks like, as well as what's often sometimes forgotten is the administrat administrative staff. They might go, well, I don't know what Teams is. I thought that's just where you join meetings or I, I don't use Google Classroom. So what I've got to do with this, but it's a whole selection of people who've got that ability to influence change and building that team that's what a sponsor can do because otherwise it's just well of course it's the IT manager going on about the use of technology in the school all the time and it doesn't have that wider impact so that's the building the coalition and then C which is really important is being able to communicate the why effectively so Eventually, with change management, people start to wonder, well, why are we doing this? This is difficult. I want to go back to how we did it before. But having that visible communication of this is why it's important and being that person to sort of say, this is really important as a school. We're now going to go this way because it makes our assessment more easy and more effective. It makes the uh, teacher work load a little bit more reduced because you're able to not stand in front of a printer waiting for all your copies to print out and all those sort of things. Having that person who can really own that and be that voice to the school or the college or the group of schools or the Ministry of Education is really important. So that's part of what effective sponsorship's about. It sounds like a lot. Do you really see this unfold anywhere in real life? Absolutely. Any examples? Yeah. So anything from an individual school through the Ministry of Education, 
I guess the analogy is you've got a speedboat or you've got an oil tanker. Speedboats can turn quickly and move quickly and that's probably an individual school level. And we've got Sarah Westcott is uh, a assistant head teacher at Queen Elizabeth School. She's presenting on the stand today, talking about their journey and implementing uh, devices for their students and being able to really see the impact on teaching and learning. So that's a great sort of speedboat analogy. And then of course, other examples that we've got from multi-academy trusts here in England as through to other ministries of education overseas, they're slower. So you're gonna see the impact take a little bit longer to uh, develop that, but being able to sort of monitor and see that progress is really useful. Typically in biggest um, environments, you might start with a pilot or a group of schools so you can see that change in a small uh, level, but that can then be replicated onto a larger scale. So. Start small, look at individual school, but yes, we can sh show that in different use cases. So if I was a teacher or a school leader now, sitting in a school, thinking about doing this, wanting to grow in this area, what should I do if I didn't have a colleague that I could reach out to? Really good question, because I've met some really effective school leaders or uh, group college leaders or multi-academy trust or group of school leaders, but you've got so many responsibilities, like to get the headspace to think beyond the you know, behavior of the students, well-being of the staff, what the parents think about this, buildings, energy costs, like it's a lot to think strategically. And particularly if you've grown from a teacher into a more leadership role, it's hard to develop those strategic skills. And therefore, I think partnerships are really important where you can work with people who might have had that experience across multiple institutions to be able to go, well, if you go down that line, there might be some barriers there you've got to jump over, or even there's some pitfalls you want to avoid. Being able to have uh, support guidance from a person, group of people, company that's done this before, I think is invaluable because education institutions are such busy places. And then you've got the holidays where you can't do much apart from sort of upgrade infrastructure. And then you're back in busy times again to be able to have that capacity to develop that uh, strategic approach is really important. And so when I talk about digital strategy and supporting leaders with that partnership, what I mean by that is not an IT strategy of, well, we need to buy these licenses and equipment. That's really important. But a digital strategy for me is where digital supports, enhances or shapes the work that you're already trying to do in your school or group of schools because that way the leadership knows it's not something different, not some additional thing. And they can see then if they've got a partner who can support them going, well, actually, what's your overall goal? Or might be to improve reading. Okay, great. To support with that, you might be able to use, for example, reading progress in Microsoft Teams. And then it's like, well, how do we get from where we are now to get there? Well, you'll need some devices for students to use. You'll need support with accounts. You'll need staff trained on how to use that. You'll need students to be able to understand how to do that. Parents will need to be informed. So it's, and there's things you might go, yes, but that's more screen time. How do we counteract that? Or when are teachers going to be able to learn how to do that? So there's a strategic approach and being able to work with a partner who's going, well, it's worked really well in this context. Let's see if there's things that are effective from there that we might be able to utilize in our own context can be really valuable. Yeah, good answer. And it, it sounds super complicated and yet really quite simple. So if, if anybody viewing this, listening to this, will want to reach out and have a conversation with you, how would they do it? Sure, you can reach out to me or Tablet Academy. We've got, you can reach out to our website, www.ta.education. We'll find a lot of resources there and you'll find ways to contact me on there or if you want an email address straight away, info at tablet.academy. We'll be able to get into the general inquiries and be able to touch base. You can find me on LinkedIn, lots of places or come to the Lenovo stand. You're all over the place. I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so, so with that, thanks for coming, Phil. I just want to say that, so Lenovo partnered up with Tablet Academy for this particular reason. We're really good at tech. They're really good at making tech work in schools. And so tomorrow we have president and founder of Tablet Academy discussing effective professional development for teachers. 9.30 UK time, same place. Thanks for listening and thanks Phil for coming. Thanks for our